What's up guys? If you don't know me already, my name is Dan Weiss and and today we are doing the big brake swap. The 300ZX to 240SX big brake kit. And I am more than excited for this. Um, it's going to look great once it's all done. So I'm just going to show you how it's done. I don't know how comprehensive the other videos are, but I'm going to show you each and every step I need to take in order to complete this thing. And you're coming along with me. So, let's get started. So, if you haven't already, jack up your car safely, remove the rim, and let's dive into it. Check it out. These are the stock S14 brakes, and we are going to remove the entire caliper. You need a 19 millimeter wrench for this. Obviously, two bolts on the knuckle there. And then we will also need to, we need to disconnect the brake line. It helps to remove the uh, speed sensor, or a ABS sensor, I don't know what it is. And then also back here, just allows you to maneuver everything a little bit easier. So for the top bolt, a 19 millimeter uh, wrench and a mallet to tap it loose. It is very tough to get a uh, socket wrench on the top one. Bottom one will be fine with your typical ratchet. Caliper's loose, we're gonna take a screwdriver and set it against the pin that's holding the brake line to the uh, coil over. We're gonna tap that loose. It's real easy. All right, now that the caliper's loose, uh, you gotta take it off the rotor. In my case, it's you know stuck on there. And you gotta bring it behind the coil over and down, and then we can tackle removing it from the hard line. Now with the caliper on the ground, I'm gonna hit that with some PB blaster. And then take an oil pan or something to catch brake fluid in. Now to remove the retaining clip, which looks like this, I'm using some channel locks. Hopefully I can get it off. All right, taking your screwdriver, putting it in front of the little hard line and sort of using that for leverage. Seems to be a good way to remove this clip. Perfect. So if you don't want to make a big mess, one thing I did is remove the banjo bolt off the back of the caliper and just let it drain into the pan. So I used a pair of channel locks to grab the uh, flare nut or whatever it's called and just rotate it loose. So we're going to take this line off now. Alright, that's stripping out. No problems there. Time to bash the hell out of this rotor until it comes off. There we go. Perfect. Wow, this thing was due. Alright, next is either completely remove the dust shield or just cut it off. I'm gonna cut it off. Because I tried just bending it back. It's a real pain because all this will rub if you don't just remove it or cut it back properly and honestly what does it matter it doesn't seem to affect much so I'm just gonna go around and cut it off call it call it a day and never look back all right dust shield is cut off I mean it looks mangled because it is but I'm not gonna remove it today I don't care that much so let me grab my rotor that's what comes next all right while it's getting dark, we got the rotor on. It spins freely, doesn't grab anything. Next, we need to take our stainless steel braided line and connect it to the hard line in the back there. Alright, so we got the stainless steel line threaded on. And I suggest doing this first because it is much easier to thread on the caliper while it is off the car rather than trying to spin that around and not get the line tangled up because it doesn't rotate freely. All right, now with the caliper attached to the stainless steel line, we're just gonna bolt up the caliper like normal. All right, once you got the caliper installed, just make sure your stainless steel braid line is clipped in appropriately 
on both sides so that you have the proper clearance when you turn the wheel and the line doesn't get pulled. Other than that, if you're not going to do the rear brake conversion, at least um, you're done for the night. Alright, so we're ready to reassemble and get this rear brake on for the big brake 300ZX swap. So here's a couple things you're going to need to know. Number one, if your car is on the east coast, chances are you've never had to change the bearings and they will be horrendously seized to the knuckle and you will not be able to get it off unless you take it to a shop. Um, I've ended up doing that and I had to replace the bearings. So keep in mind to do that, um, I suggest uh, Timken bearings. You can find them on Rock Auto. They're about 70 bucks a piece. It sucks, but save yourself uh, the heartache, get it done, and don't worry about it after that. Second thing, with the knuckle, um, especially if it's corroded, you may not have this trouble if you're from California, but the, I'll show you. While looking at the rear knuckle, you have it all together or apart, either way, the kingpin bolt. Um, on an East Coast car, you'll notice it's not used, it's just there for whatever reason, I guess luckily for this swap, but the inner diameter of that opening in the knuckle will have corroded and expanded, making it impossible to put the bolt in as is. So what you'll have to do is grab a metal file and sand it down, or use a Dremel. Metal file worked really well for me, I didn't have a Dremel. Now, with the R33 parking brake cable, you'll notice it'll have two uh, connection points, or anchor points, whatever. Um, the first one and then the second one right about here. I pulled the second one off because it was useless and I found that this point was too far up the line to actually make it so I could connect to the subframe properly. So what I did was I took some pliers and pushed it back about an inch or so. Um, I suggest making it so you can actually slide it up and down just a little bit because it it makes your life easier when you go to install. As you know, it's very inaccessible after that. And another thing, I found when removing this whole assembly initially that I needed a ball joint separator. Go ahead and order yourself some new ball joints for the rear. Um, they do not sell them individually as rear components. You have to buy the front one. I bought the one um, from Rock Auto. This is a Moog ball joint. It fits in the factory position. Uh, other people have used the same one and had no issues. I suggest that. I think they're like 30 bucks for the pair. So you might as well replace them. You probably haven't done it before. So we gotta throw the whole knuckle and rear assembly back on the car and honestly it's kind of a pain in the ass by yourself. I suggest getting the axle on first then setting the ball joint in and then you can worry about the arms afterwards. Also feed the parking cable a little bit through so you can maneuver it once it's all in place. So if you have ABS in your car you're going to need to buy a little plug for the center of the brake master cylinder. There's three fitting options. The center one um, you don't use, so that needs to be plugged up. Best way to do that is to pick yourself up an M10-1.0 little plug. I think you can pick them up at hardware stores. I didn't. I ordered mine off Amazon. They're hard to find because they're metric. Alright, now the real brake is pretty straightforward. First we're going to remove the caliper, All right, 17 millimeter. All right. To remove the parking brake. It'll be sitting like this. You gotta push that in. Well, you gotta turn it 90 and push it in until it comes out. It may take a little bit of effort, 
but if you look on the opposite side, you can see a channel. So you gotta unhook at least one parking brake in order to be able to do this. So I messed up a little bit. I was trying to pull the axle out off the knuckle and I pulled the boot off. Another thing I'm going to have to replace. Parking brake cable's out. Time to just remove the hose, brake hose. Let that drain out, and then I don't make a mess everywhere else. Now that that's in place, let's get under the car. Also, quick safety tip, make sure to always have your car properly supported and put some wheels under it, you don't want to die. Right? Fair enough. All right. I'm not sure how well you can see, but the exact opposite process you did to take the cable off, you're going to use to put it back on. And make sure your e-brake cable isn't pulled in the cabin of the car, otherwise this may get difficult. All right. Oh, that went really smoothly. Once you get them in place, make sure. All right. So once you get the cables in place, make sure you put them back in their retaining clips. You don't want them to get tangled in the drive shaft. I don't know if that would happen, but you know, and then secure them properly. Pretty easy. I think it's 10 mil. All right. So everything's in place. Now we gotta reach back on in there where my finger is and connect the cable to the bracket. I have the nut and bolt already there. Grab yourself a stubby ratchet or a 10 millimeter wrench. I think the wrench is going to be our best bet to be honest. Alright, now that the parking brake is in place, it's time to button up all the arms and then we'll get ready to install the brake caliper. Now it's time to install the caliper. What I would do is thread the stainless steel line on first Make sure your bleeding, bleeding screw is going to be facing on the top, and then this you just screw on. All right, throw your dusty ass rotor on. Now we can install the caliper. So that about does it. Now you have your full rear brake system set up. Don't mind a missing cotter pin. I still need to put that in. But look at it. Doesn't that look great? Ugh. Now once the wheels are on, it's going to look fantastic. Alright, so the easiest way to upgrade the pedal feel of the 300ZX brake swap is to swap in a 300ZX master cylinder. Brake master cylinder, I don't know. Um, 
So, if you don't want to do wiring, what you can do is remove the reservoir from the stock S14 reservoir and put it on the 300ZX um, Breakmaster cylinder. Um, all you have to do is just pop it off. It's sitting in there just by rubber grommets. I put it in a vise and just used a large screwdriver just to pry it off. Real quick and easy, didn't damage it whatsoever. Where's my towels? Done. It's that simple. It's amazing actually. I wanted to give you a better look on what the lines actually look like on a car with ABS. I haven't found that anywhere, and I think this would be helpful. So, the rear one fits the rear, and then the front one needs to be adjusted a little bit. Mine's not perfect, but to the uh, new Breakmaster cylinder. Now, the middle one I didn't use. I don't have a third line because I have ABS. So, you need to get a plug for this. It is a M10 dash 1.0 thread pitch. It's a little hexagonal um, pipe plug. I think you can get them at a hardware store, but with the whole COVID-19 thing, I had to order them. You can find them on Amazon. And so, you just plug this up with some thread tape, make sure it's snug. I didn't have to cut into the original Breakmaster cylinder and uh, pull out any sort of flare fitting. Not sure why anyone else did. But that, I think that's a uh, non-ABS.